OK, so now we're going to paint prefabs. And this sounds a little bit weird that we're painting prefabs, but the tile map system in Unity allows you to do not only placing tiles onto a grid, but placing prefabs or any other type of game object. Some of you probably think, you know, why would we want to do this? And that's because our level is currently, it's a level we can walk around, we can crouch, we have this really nice, uh, pretty lighting, we can jump up to areas, but we don't have any mechanics, we don't have any parts of the level, such as spikes, collectible items, doors, and things like that. All the typical things that turn this from a walking simulator into a kick-ass game. So what we want to do is we want to take some game objects that have different behaviors, in our case, some spikes that kill the player, and some shrines, which have orbs that you collect and gain points, and then you can beat the level, and place them into our scene. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to the props folder and find that we have, or I have, this spikes prefab, which has a couple of setup elements, such as a collider and a renderer and things like that. And we also have a shrine. And the shrine is built up of this sort of pedestal and this collectible orb. And we could just ignore the whole tar map element and just drag and drop, you know, the shrines and the spikes. But as you can see, it's, it's really cumbersome to then take these and then, you know, add some more, like, and then you have to line it up and it doesn't look entirely perfect. Whereas you'll notice that the shrine pedestal is about one unity block or one tile on the tile map. And the spikes are also the same. They're about one tile on this tile map. And we don't want to drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. We want to use the power of the tile map palette to be able to paint these prefabs into the tiles. So if I go back to the tile palette here, you'll notice that the tile palette at the very bottom has a default brush. And over that default brush, we have a whole range of different possibilities of different brushes. And the default brush places sprites or tiles onto the tile map. Now, just in case you're wondering, those other brushes, those are from the 2D Extras kit as well. So if you don't see those, that's why. That's where they came from. The same place where you get the rule tile and the random tile and the animation tile and things like this. Now, we don't want to paint sprites. We want to paint game objects, or in this case, prefabs. So I'm going to go to the Tiles folder. I'm going to right-click. Brushes folder. The Brushes folder, thank you. <laughs> Testing you. Right-click, Create. Notice at the very top of this Asset menu, just above Rule Tile, which is the one we created for the random tiles, we have the Prefab Brush. I'm just going to create one. I'm going to call this the Spike Brush. To be yes. clear, it doesn't matter that you put it in the Brushes folder or not. Just for organization. That's it. You can tell Mike was uh, worked in education, right? Yeah. So with this spike brush prefab, uh, with this spike brush created, you'll notice that the inspector. Whoop, I won't do that again. Zoom too far. I've gone too far. The spike brush has a prefabs list, so we can actually give it multiple prefabs. This is especially great if you want to place like lots of random different types of spikes. We only have one, just for simplicity. You can obviously add your own later. So I'm going to set this prefab size to be one. And then using the little circle selector, you notice that we have all the prefabs on our project, and I can choose spikes. Now, with this spike brush created, I can then go into this drop-down list, and hey, look, we've got a good friend, the spike brush, and that's a selectable brush. Now, before I choose that, I'm going to choose which layer to paint this on, which tile map. We don't want to paint spikes into the background. That doesn't really make much sense. We want to paint sh them on shadows. We're going to paint them onto the platforms layer. So the platforms layer set, I can then choose the spike brush. What you'll notice now is, what you'll notice now is I can then choose the brush here, and then as I go into the scene, I'm now placing prefabs onto the tile map. And this is really handy because some elements, such as more uh, static or sort of simple elements, you want to be sprites or tiles. Um, and in some more complex things, like spikes where the player touches them and dies, or collectible items, you want them to be prefabs that are then painted onto the tile map. And this is purely just placing them at this grid. So as I place spikes here, it's just detecting where which tile it is, and then kind of just spawning it where this grid is. So we, you can actually go in and actually select the spikes and actually move them around after they've been placed and things like this. We're going to use it so that we have nice, easy um, placement. 
This looks a little messy, so I'm going to get rid of these spikes, which obviously you can select the game objects. And I'm going to paint. I'm not going to make it too difficult for Mike. Mike hasn't played this game much, so. I'm, I've played it a ton, I'm just not very good at it. So I'm going to place some spikes here. Let's place one here, is that okay? Yeah, we'll make that work. We'll soon find out. Place one here. I'm going to die on that one. Place here? <laughs> yeah, that's a No, good let's place them here. <laughs> And most importantly, I'm going to place a really long line of spikes across the bottom of the level. So the, and why not? Let's just place them here as well. So you can notice that very quickly you can just paint prefabs or paint sort of some kind of game mechanics in your scene. Do you want to paint any more, Mike? No, but you just did something that would be a great learning when you looped back over yourself while painting uh, spikes. Oh, yeah. So if I paint over this spot and keep painting in the same spot, it's going to keep placing prefabs. So you might have like lots and lots of prefabs in the same tile. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, obviously, we can go in and select them individually. You can erase them too. Yeah. Ah, yeah. We also have a paintbrush. We also have a paintbrush. And we can erase them. So yeah, Tarmap Palette not only allows you to paint tiles, but also prefabs. Really cool. So we have these spikes. Now, we don't want this game to be so grim and dark that everything is spikes. So I'm going to go back to this brushes folder. Now I'm going to create a, another prefab brush and call this the shrine brush. And the shrine brush, again, one prefab. Choose the asset selector. And I'm going to choose the shrine. Not the reference shrine. That's for like the backup scenes, like uh, if any of you get stuck. But the shrine. And what you'll notice is I can then go down to the default brush at the very bottom choose shrine, and then paint some shrines. So I'm going to put one up here. Let's put one here. It's an easy one for you, Mike. Let's put one here. So we've got some three shine, shrines painted in the scene. So now this is painted, we can then go in and play and test our environment. Now, Robbie is like earlier, like Terminator before. He's still invincible. He has no player health script. So actually, the spikes don't do anything currently, but that will come later on. However, the shrines, let's go through that little gap mean that we've painted an orb that can be collected. So you can set up your game logic in a prefab and then place them on the tarmac. It's also worth noting that the gameplay of the game is there's going to be a door blocking your exit. You have to collect each orb without dying, obviously. That opens the door. So you know, placing one orb, placing 100 orbs, which however many, the game will auto-detect them, and you're going to have to collect all of the orbs. So just keep that in mind with your level design and stuff like that, how many orbs you want in order to play this game. Yeah, that, look, it's buggy. That's handy. <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's quite useful. I could probably win this one. Yeah. So this is quite an easy step, actually. The step was just going to the brushes folder. In the brushes folder, right click, create, and create two prefab brushes, one for spikes and one for shrines. And then on each brush asset, set up just one prefab. We're not painting multiple uh, spikes, multiple shrines um, in that list. The shrine, assign the shrine prefab. The spike, assign the, spike, uh, assign the spikes prefab. We really name sh shrine and spikes. It's just it's very good and very tongue tied. <laughs> yeah. Then when you go back to the tile palette, choose which layer you're going to paint on, in this case, platforms. Choose what you're going to paint or which brush you're going to use. Go to the paintbrush and then paint some of your scene. Maybe a little bit fiddly at first, but then just get a feel for painting spikes around your environment. I've seen some really amazing levels, and I'm very curious on how many shrines and spikes are going to be placing. We didn't add any code, which is like collect six infinity orbs, and then like all the t half the tiles like dissolve. No one got that reference. That was a, a waste of time. It's joke. just too soon, Andy. Everyone's still hurt from that movie. I don't feel so good, Mike. <laughs> um, OK, cool. And then that's the end of that step.